Hey guys, today's tutorial is going to walk you through the process of setting up an OpenVPN connection on your Asus brand router. Asus is one of the only router manufacturers whose stock firmware has the ability to connect to third-party VPN services, which allows you to protect your entire network at once instead of having to manually connect to the VPN on each individual device. The other advantage is uh, if you use this method and protect your entire network with a VPN connection, you can actually connect uh, devices that don't have any VPN support built in whatsoever, such as a Fire Stick, Chromecast, Apple TV, Roku, Xbox, etc. You just connect them to the VPN enabled router and they're instantly using the VPN connection. So we're going to show you exactly how to do this with two of our favorite VPN providers. So today we're going to be using two of our favorite VPN services, Private Internet Access and NordVPN, to demonstrate the two different setup methods for creating a VPN connection on your Asus brand router. If you already have a VPN subscription from a different provider, you will be able to follow these exact steps using your own VPN service as long as they support OpenVPN, which most of them do. Uh, if you don't have a VPN service or you're maybe looking to switch, we highly recommend both of these providers. Both of them have a zero log privacy policy, making them highly anonymous. And they also support the most recent and cutting edge encryption methods, including 256 bit AES encryption, which is still considered unbreakable, even by the NSA. Uh, these services are very similar. Both support at almost every major VPN usage, including things like Kodi, uh, and file sharing at torrent. So they definitely believe in net neutrality. The primary difference between them is uh, we think private internet accesses software is a bit more, uh, gives more custom control. You have control over the encryption strength and algorithm used and things like that. And the main advantage of NordVPN is they're actually one of the only VPNs in the world that still works with Netflix. So if your main goal is to try to unblock Netflix from anywhere in the world, NordVPN is the one to go with. If you'd like to try one of these VPN services for yourself or maybe learn more about them, we'd love it if you used our affiliate link shown below. If you do sign up through our link, we receive a small commission, which makes a huge impact on our ability to keep qu producing quality content like this. Also, make sure to check out our in-depth reviews of both of these providers, which you can find on vpnuniversity.com, and we'll actually link the reviews directly in the uh, video description for you to check out. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. So the first thing you need to do is log into your Asus router's control panel. Now, as you can see, ours is located at the IP address of 192.168.138.1. Now this probably isn't the IP address of your control panel. If you're using the default settings, yours is gonna be 192.168.1.1, or you may have manually set it to something else. Uh, when you initially configured your router. If you're not sure what the IP address of your router is, you can open the uh, command prompt in Windows and then type IP config and scroll down here uh, on your Wi-Fi adapter and look at the default gateway and that'll tell you the IP address that your router is located at. So just type that into your web address uh, bar and it'll bring up this login page right here. Now, if you've never set up a password for your router, and this is different than your wireless password, but it's actually the password of your router's admin panel, then the username and password will both be admin, A-D-M-I-N. Uh, but we've configured our own username and password, so we're gonna log in and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so here we are in the router control panel, and in order to access the VPN settings, see this menu on the left, we're gonna scroll down to VPN, and just click on this, and uh, this is right now the default uh, window it brings up is the VPN server mode. That's not what we want. We want VPN client mode, which allows us to connect to a third party VPN server. So we're gonna click on the VPN client tab. And here there's just all these, uh, basically there's a blank list and this allows you to add VPN profiles. So to create a VPN connection, all you have to do is click add profile. And then we're gonna choose open VPN, uh, which is the preferred VPN protocol and most modern VPN providers will support this protocol. So in order to set up a connection, you're gonna need a few things. First off, you're gonna need an active VPN subscription from a third party VPN provider. You're gonna to need to know your username and password uh, to log on to the VPN service for that provider. And then you are gonna need the open VPN configuration files that that provider uh, has. And you're gonna to have to download those manually um, and 
where you find them depends a little bit on your VPN provider. Uh, usually it's gonna be in their help documentation somewhere or in their uh, in one of their setup tutorials, or you can just ask support uh, where you can find the OVPN config files. But we're gonna show you what this looks like. So um, this is private internet access is uh, Windows Open VPN setup tutorial. And you can just see that they have a link right to their uh, Open VPN configuration files right in the middle of the tutorial. And the same thing is true of NordVPN, this is just their Windows 7 setup tutorial, and then they link to their uh, their config file. So if you just click this, it'll download their configs. As you can see, we've downloaded them already, and we're gonna open them up just so you can get a, a sense of what a VPN configuration file looks like. Okay, so these are the uh, configuration files for private internet access and uh, you can see these are this is the open VPN logo and that's what uh, a .ovpn file is an open VPN configuration file and if you open it up uh, so you don't want to double click it to open it up you can actually right click it and uh, open it with like a, a text editor so you could use notepad but we prefer to use wordpad because it sort of organizes it cleanly uh, if you open it in notepad it just wraps all these things around. It won't be on individual lines. So it's a pretty simple thing. And this is basically just the settings that the VPN server uses when you connect. So that's the OVPN config file. And then the second piece is the uh, CA certificate file. And we can open that. And this is uh, just basically a bunch of gobbledygook, but it's the, the public uh, key that you use to access the VPN server. And this is just sort of a way of authenticating that you are a valid client of the v VPN server. So private internet access uh, keeps these two configuration files separate. However, some VP VPN providers like NordVPN actually combine them both into one. So if we uh, open this file here, you can see this is the OVPN part, like you saw in private internet access. The settings are a little bit different. And if you scroll down, they actually have the certificate filed file embedded in the OVPN file. So this will actually save us a little bit of trouble when we try to set the, uh, the VPN connection up in a second. And it doesn't really matter which way your provider does it. We're gonna show you exactly how to uh, set up either type of VPN provider, but usually it's gonna be one or the other. Either they will embed this certificate file, the CA file in the OVPN file, or they won't. Okay, so going back to our uh, our configuration here, um, to set up a new connection, first you're gonna enter a description of what the connection is so that when you go to activate a connection, you'll know which one it is that you're looking at. So we're gonna name this private internet access. Canada. So usually you would want to put the name of the VPN provider maybe and then the server location so you know uh, which location you're going to start. And then you would enter your username and password here. We're not going to do that on camera. And then uh, this is where you import your OVPN file. That's the open VPN configuration file. So okay, so we're going to open the uh, folder of PIA config files and we're going to go to Canada, this is uh, CA for Canada, and then Toronto, we're gonna to choose a Toronto server. So you're just gonna double click to open that. And then the most important thing to do is after you've chosen the file, you have to make sure to click upload, or actually the file won't be sent to the router. So we're gonna click upload. This takes a sec. Okay, so it says complete, as in we have the full OVPN file, it's valid, but then it says lack of certificate revocation list, lack of certificate authority. And the certificate authority, that CA file, is what we showed you separately uh, from private internet access. So we're gonna have to uh, import that file manually. So you're gonna click the import CA file or edit the open VPN file manually. And then under import CA file, we're gonna go to choose file. And this is what you want here. You want the ca.rsa2048 uh, CRT file. Okay, so you're gonna select that file and then make sure to click upload again. All right, it should be all set. And then uh, we're just gonna enter our username and password here and then we'll hit okay. All right, so we got our username and password in here. We're just gonna hit the okay button. All right, so now you've got this connection right here. Um, and all you have to do to test the VPN connection to see if it's working 
is uh, click the activate button. So I'll give it a sec. Oh, didn't work the first time. Sometimes it takes a couple tries. As you can see, sometimes it's just a little glitchy, so we actually had to click this about three times. But what you want to look for is that uh, icon rotating over here. And then now uh, we got a check mark that says the connection was, was successful. Uh, if you would enter the wrong password or something, you'd actually get an X that said it wasn't connected properly. So now if we want to test the VPN connection, we would just go to a website like uh, IPlocation.net. So this is the new public IP address that we've had assigned by the uh, VPN. And don't worry if it says maybe the wrong country for one of these servers. Um, the, the geolocation services they use to locate your connection are sort of imperfect, but they all say the same IP address. And you notice that these ones say Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So we know the VPN is working. Uh, and just to prove it, if we disconnect it here, so we're gonna hit the deactivate button. And then uh, refresh. So now uh, we just refresh the page and uh, it's back to our old IP address. And as you can see, it's showing uh, New York, United States as the location. All right, so that VPN connection was work working properly. So we are gonna show you, uh, that was how to set it up uh, with uh, having to manually import the, the certificate file. And now we're gonna show you how to set up a VPN provider that has the certificate file embedded right in the OVPN config. All right, so now to create the NordVPN profile, we're just gonna click the add VPN profile again and make sure to select open VPN again. Uh, and this time we're gonna do a Netherlands VPN server. Okay. And then uh, we're going to import the VPN file. So we're going to go back to our VPN configs. Uh, and we're going to scroll down. And on, on the NordVPN website, there's a list of all the servers. So you know what these letters in front of them uh, refer to. But each, each one basically is a country code. So we're going to scroll down to NL for Netherlands. And here you have the choice between TCP and UDP. And it also gives you a list of different ports. Uh, we always prefer UDP connections, and the reason is they're much faster, so it's better for applications like video streaming, uh, torrenting, things like that. So don't choose TCP unless you have a good reason to do so. So we're going to choose NL15, that's Netherlands Server 15, the UDP version. All right, and then we're going to click Upload. And you're going to notice that this time uh, it just says complete. It doesn't say there's no CA certificate file embedded in the OVPN file. So if it, you don't get that message like we didn't hear, you don't have to upload the, the CA file manually like we did with private internet access. So we're just going to enter a username and password here and we will see you on the other side. All right. And now that we got our connection all configured, we're just going to hit the activate button to test it. I don't know why it's being so glitchy today. There we go. Two tries. All right. We got the check mark, which means we have a good VPN connection. And to validate, we just go to IPlocation.net. All right. And as you can see, it says uh, our new IP address here, which was different than the one from private internet access. And it says country Netherlands. So one of the nice things about Asus WRT, uh, the, this router firmware, is that you can add a number of connections. I, I can't remember what the exact limit is, but somewhere between five and 10 connections. And you can switch between them. You just have to hit deactivate, and then you can activate uh, any other connection you want. So you can pretty quickly switch to a different uh, server location or even VPN service. Now, one other thing that you might want to do um, when you have a VPN set up, and this is just uh, in terms of leak protection, is a lot of VPNs have, uh, if you use the VPN software on your computer, they have IPv6 leak protection, which prevents your VPN from leaking its IPv6 address. Uh, and that's different than the IP address we showed you here. This is an IPv4 address, but they're actually running out of those. So now devices also have an IPv6 address. So in order to prevent yourself from leaking your IPv6 address, we're gonna go to the IPv6 settings. Uh, in your router firmware and basically you can just turn it off. So 
uh, this makes it so your router won't use IPv6 at all and it won't pass on any uh, IPv6 connections to devices on your network. Then you just uh, click apply. We already had it disabled, but you can click apply and that's it. All right, and then uh, one last security measure you might want to consider uh, in order to plug what is known as DNS leaks is to specify uh, your own DNS servers for your router. And in order to access those settings, you just go to the WAN section of the uh, advanced settings and you scroll down and you can see uh, that you get the opportunity to specify two DNS servers. And what this is, is anytime you type a web address like google.com or um, vpnuniversity.com into your web browser, that request gets sent to a do domain name service server that will translate that web address into a physical IP address so they know where to locate, your computer knows where to locate that website on the internet. Um, and sometimes your internet provider your ISP tries to sort of intercept these DNS queries and redirect them to their own DNS server. But if you can specify on your router that it will only use these DNS servers, uh, then you don't have to worry about it. So what we've done here is these are the IP address of a public DNS service called Komodo DNS, which is owned by the famous uh, firewall and antivirus provider. But you could also, uh, if you only use one VPN service on your router instead of multiple, you could actually use the DNS service provided by your VPN service. And almost all of them do uh, have their own DNS servers. So here, for example, are the ones for NordVPN. So if you have a NordVPN subscription, you could just use these uh, DNS servers that they provide on their website, or you can just uh, ask your VPN provider's help team, support team, uh, which servers to use. So you would just uh, copy and paste these right from their website. And then uh, just hit apply and they'll be saved. Uh, and from then on, your router will always use those DNS servers for your connection to do all DNS lookups. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. Thanks so much for checking it out. Uh, if you would please take a quick second and just hit the like button below, it makes such a massive difference in video exposure for this video. And also, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our VPN reviews and tutorials and stuff, uh, hit the subscribe button. All right, thanks a lot and have a great day.